I started to think that authenticity was a device. That's when I started working with images that had already been produced by robots or machines or satellites. There was a rawness in the image making that felt authentic. Documentary is a commitment to trying to see what's there and feel something about it and reflect on it and critique it so that we don't just accept it. I mean, without perspective, we're, we're, we're nothing. I mean, we're just, we're just drones ourselves. And if you look at it long enough, you might find something. I've been working on a series based on giant oil fields, photographed by satellites. They make no discrimination as to where they are. This kind of mechanical beast that doesn't stop sucking something out of the earth. There isn't enough time spent looking at the world. I'll look at something and I'll think, what the hell is that? The internet is full of all these leaks. If you just know where to look, you can find things that are incredibly powerful and subversive. For a while, the internet seemed able to, to, to flatten hierarchy so that everyone's voice was equal. I don't know how much longer that'll last, but I'm trying to make the most of it. Every now and again, something really absurd happens. The Dutch did it this time. They chose to hide these locations using the most spectacular Photoshop effect. That does the very opposite of hiding anything. Rather than making us scared, they're actually making us look at the landscape in a new way that's not terrifying at all. When you're doing street photography, you, you are in the way, always. Suddenly you've got a car doing it for you with 15 cameras on its roof. And nothing's in the way. It's like pure street photography. It just captures what's there and that's it. Discarded lives. It's something we don't want to see. It's not prostitution, it's the female form. That kind of subject and photography are totally intertwined because it comes back to power. Now the camera is power and the person who holds the camera is in control. The female figure stands for the promise of life but the landscape looks so desolate. Instead of sending the drones to Mars, we sent them to Earth. You could look at Earth with that same degree of wonder as you would Mars. It was possible to represent the distance from the sun to Pluto in 6,000 pages. It's got everything that you could ever want to know about anything. But at the same time, you might also find nothing. It's impossible that we're alone in the universe. We're never gonna find anybody else. It's just impossible. So we've, we've got to find each other, really. Which is hard enough. The photographer as a character in film history is just hilarious. We separated all of the scenes where they were just the photographers and we just wanted the photographers to almost shoot each other in a way that they shoot everything that moves in the world. That such a cliche. Good. Just beautiful. But you find yourself as a photographer behaving like a cliche as well. Very happy just now. And that's really funny when you put them together. Imagine this. Yes. Yes, very tasty. Yes, I like it, I like it. Go on. 
Well, it's funny, isn't it? I mean, do photographers own what they photograph? What I think is really interesting about the Less Americans book is who do Frank's images belong to? Does Frank own what he photographed? It's raw material for me. It's just raw material. In the same way that the girl in the elevator was raw material for Frank's image, Frank's image is the raw material for my image. I think it was about time that we erased Frank's The Americans. It was almost important to be able to do it and to say it can be done. It's necessary to question images and I thought that was a pretty good way of doing it. I sent one to Frank, but I never heard from him. But I imagine he's got bigger fish to fry. His lawyer bought some copies. An appropriation artist is the person who says, look at this. I mean, really look at this. What can we see in, in that thing that's already been created? The whole notion of copyright seems a little absurd, What's more important is what's being communicated, not who owns what. I don't own the words that I'm saying now, but I'm able to communicate something to you by putting these words together. And I think it's the same with images. I'm trying to create sentences and paragraphs that are made up out of images. Whether they're other people's images or my own, it really doesn't matter to me. There are prizes for just about anything. There'd be a prize for a long-haired cat award. There'd be a prize for the biggest burger. Everybody was kind of striving to be a winner. I put myself in those pictures. I used a passport photo. When you have your passport photo done in England, they actually tell you not to show any emotion. You have to have your poker face on. And I found that the minute that you had pictures in which winners showed no emotion at all, it made the act of winning really ambiguous. You could no longer associate pleasure with winning. It wasn't that simple. It made you look at winning as though the striving to be a winner was a striving to find something that you would never find. And I loved it because it made me laugh. I really cried with laughter and I didn't realize that photography could do that. You know, I have the same sense of wonder looking at this stuff than I did when I first started going out into the streets with a camera. I'm almost starting to believe in images again.